going up uh, over the Eisenhower Pass or Eisenhower Tunnel, whatever it's called. I got slowed down back there by a car that pulled out in front of me and I've just been using cruise control. So the adaptive cruise control slowed me down and then now it's speeding back up to 65. But uh, temperatures are nice and cool. Hold on, buddy. We're going over the mountain. There's no internet right now, okay? But uh, I think the, I'm pulling a 45-foot toy hauler that probably weighs about 19,000 pounds. We've got two dirt bikes and a side-by-side -side in there, plus water and fuel and all of our stuff. Um, so empty the trailer is about 14,000. About 2,000 pounds of liquids, 2,000 pounds for the side-by-side. -side. That puts us at 18. Plus all of our stuff and odds and ends, I'd say we're probably around 19, maybe a little bit more. Um, it's a big trailer, tall, 13 and a half feet, 45 feet long. So as you can see, we're going over a tunnel with these semi trucks going about 30 miles an hour and we're still doing 55. I know if I put my foot to the floor, we could pick the speed back up. Um, but uh, I'm not going to I'm just letting cruise control do its thing and it's in tow haul mode obviously so it's a new 23 F350 um, with the high output diesel it's pretty much a fully loaded truck minus the sunroof it's got the black appearance package but uh, it's a note on that. I love the truck, it's amazing. I get the same gas mileage pulling this big. Nearly, uh, I think Colorado has, Colorado and New Mexico have about the worst roads. It's nice that it puts the uh, camera on when you turn, use the blinker. But, uh, yeah, pulling uh, my small trailer with the F-150, I get six to eight miles to the gallon. And in this thing, um, on flat ground, obviously, I pull it about 70. Um, it still gets eight or nine miles to the gallon. So, temperatures are still nice and cool. 220 on the engine oil temperature. Man, these roads are so bad. This truck rides so smooth. It just blew me away. I thought being in this F-350, it would just have like this rock hard suspension, but uh, it actually rides nicer than my 2013 F-150 did. And I owned that truck for over 10 years, bought it when it was brand new. And this thing just has the most quiet and smooth ride. You can hear the fans when the fans come on. So engine oil temps up at 2.30 now. The fans will come on and then pull the temperature right back down. So the truck has 2,000 miles on it now. I drove it um, from the dealer back to the house. I put about 1,000 miles on it. I did an oil change um, with Rotella T6. Uh, just have a fresh oil change to get that uh, I don't know if Ford runs a semi-synthetic oil. I think they do. Um, so I swapped that out for a full synthetic T6 5W40, which is what Ford recommends for the um, severe duty. So I knew I was going to be towing this big trailer. So uh, I did the oil change um, prior to its first tow. So now we're just about to go through the Eisenhower Tunnel. Doing great. See, temps come back down in the 220s. And when I get home, we'll probably have about pretty close to uh, 3,000 miles on the truck. It's a little too fast for me to kick off the cruise control. Can keep it at 60. But uh, it's really cool. You can actually set the cruise. Oh, the speed limit's 50. I'm going to bring 
the speed down. You can actually set, put in the settings, the cruise control, to follow the speed limits, or you can put a buffer to stay below or above the speed limits. We'll keep it at uh, 50 through the tunnel. So it's got a lot of cool features. Um, when there's no trailer attached to it, it'll basically drive itself. Uh, it'll go around curves, obviously the adaptive cruise control, come to a stop at a stop sign behind a car, obviously, and then go again. Um, I'm really impressed with the, it's not a lane keep, it actually will drive. It's really good at staying in the lane and you can be completely hands off. Um, obviously lots of uh, different screens with the full digital display here. Um, usually I run on this screen here. So I've got the heads up display turned off, but I'll turn that back on. There it is, you can see the little logo that comes up, and there it is. It'll give you a lot of information to include driving. Um, so let's bring that up. And this is usually where I'm at right here when I'm towing on these screens here. Now we're just coming out the other side. I'll kick it up to 60. And with the cruise control on, with the exhaust brake, um, I doubt that I'll even have to use the brake. It'll downshift. It'll really use that uh, exhaust brake. You can see the exhaust brake coming up 64%, 66 Gotta get out of this guy, out of this freaking lane. I'm not driving in the right lane, it's just too bad. It's so torn up. So, it'll keep it right at 60 miles an hour. See, we're at three and a half thousand RPM in fourth gear, and I won't have to even touch the brakes. It's really good, it's almost too good because it's really aggressive at keeping you at your set speed. It's actually dropping below 60. But uh, yeah, I'm pulling an ATC toy hauler. It's got a gooseneck conversion. Here's the heads up display. It's, it's really cool. This window's filthy. But it'll show you, you know, all your information. It'll uh, even put the little bars on the side to keep you in the lane when you have that turned on. So, and these roads in Colorado, they are just as bad as New Mexico. But, uh, see, it'll show you, gives you a lot of information. I mean, there's so much information you can pull up on this center stack, or this this side screen over here, the center stack. Go through your trip. You can display the same information that you display on your main gauges on the center stack over here. said keeps it right at 60. These Colorado roads are 
bad. But, uh, yeah. So, really impressed with the truck. Love the looks. Haven't had any problems. Some, some learning curve uh, with the death. This is my first diesel. I've always had trucks, but usually I've been in a half ton F-150. But uh, the way they have the programming set in these trucks, it will, uh, once you get to 500 miles till empty on the DEF, it will not reset until you get the DEF above 80% or above 500 miles till empty. It'll still keep dinging at you until your DEF is low. Even if you put fluid in it and get it up to 75%, because um, I didn't like topping it off. I always just kind of was worried about it spraying out uh, when I was trying to top it off. So I just put a couple gallons in every time. But if you get that warning light of the 500 miles till empty on the def, you can't turn it off until you um, get it above 80%. So anyways, that's it. It's just really good at keeping this paint. Do oil changes on this thing every 5,000 miles is my plan. Um, fuel filters every 20,000. All the other fluids, the transmission, the diff, transfer case, all the gear oils every 50,000. Um, obviously, I'd like to delete the emissions and just let this truck function as they should. I hate the diff fluid. It's such a pain in the ass. I mean, when you're towing, I can probably get about a thousand miles towing this big trailer with a uh, with the def tank full. So you figure def is about five dollars a gallon. This I think it has a six gallon tank, so thirty dollars extra every thousand miles when you're towing. This has the uh, it's a long bed. So it's got the 48 gallon tank. But uh, it's, it's a pretty amazing truck. It, it's the nicest vehicle I've ever owned. I mean, the quality of everything just it seems like it's really good. Uh, I do have the Pro Power on board on this thing. I can show you that. It would be kind of cool to figure out how to, I mean, the seven, the seven pin connector in the truck uh, will recharge the lithium ion batteries in the trailer. We've got uh, 210 amp hours of lithium ion batteries and some solar and 2000 watt inverter. So we can run, uh, we run the generator when it's hot for about eight hours a day if we're somewhere hot, but uh, as soon as it cools down and we get the, it's got a bunch of max air fans on the roof, three of them. Uh, as soon as we get uh, the temperature comes down, we can run off the batteries, you know, for probably a full 24 hours. I mean, if the sun's out indefinitely, we can just uh, run the fridge and all the outlets. We can watch TV. This It's got a stereo system on the inside, speakers on the outside. Um, a third battery would be nice for those days when there's no sun. I haven't had that issue yet because we've only had the trailer for two weeks and the truck for two weeks. Picked up the truck and trailer on the same day. So, um, but I could see on a day when there is no sun out, a uh, third battery would be nice. But if we do run the generator, in about two hours, the generator will recharge the batteries and then we're good to go. So, honestly, I mean, the solar's nice to have maybe as a contingency, but when you're only burning half a gallon an hour of fuel and you run, you know, let's say we run it for eight hours, that's four gallons of generator fuel. Um, you know, $3 a gallon, it's 12 bucks. So we prefer to boondock and the only time we go to an RV park is maybe once a week just to um, empty out the tanks. 
So the ATC toy hauler I have has a 200 gallon fresh water tank. So we can do um, about a week and then we've got 72 gallons of fuel on board. And I believe that, I, I know the gray tank is 65 gallons and I believe the black tank is also 65 gallons. So we've, we've boondocked for a week and the fresh water, you know, we take quick two, three minute showers, but we're showering every day and there's three of us. So even if we use 20 gallons of water a day between showers and drinking and doing dishes, that's 10 days of water. So we've done about seven and it showed it was at 30% of the fresh water capacity. So that's about as far as we will go is about seven days. And then we'll hit an RV park, you know, empty all the tanks, top off all the fluids, and then go back out. So and RV parks, especially in the areas we want to go to, are, they get pretty expensive there. The one we were at in Moab was basically $100 a night. So $100 a night for an RV park, or I can just boondock and, uh, you know, at most, you know, say 15 bucks in gas for the generator. Yeah, wear and tear on the generator, stuff like that. But we prefer to be out in nature and not crammed into an uh, RV spot. So, anyways, um, yeah. Still going down the, uh, still going down the mountain. It's still, you can see it downshifting, that engine brake. You can scroll through all the gauges. There's so many configurations. It's, I, I still haven't gotten through everything. You can double up the gauges like this. You can do so many different views. Man, these roads are so bad. I mean, it's holding 65. Um, let's see. Let's go back one more. This one's, I don't really use it, but it's kind of cool. This calm view you can set, and then it just kind of blacks it out. It just gives you bare minimum information. But, uh, these roads, here's the bottom. I wonder if this is where they start the Ike Gauntlet right here, exit 228. Kind of looks like a good spot to start. They've got an on-ramp on the other side. I gotta get over. There's some traffic over here. Window is filthy. But uh, you can even configure this calm view to kind of show the information you want to see. Um, you can scroll through so many different displays to look at. There's my tire pressures. So 60s in the front, 80 in the rear, which is what is recommended. So I kind of like to stay on this screen, but there are a lot more screens you can go through. You can have your navigation on there, towing information, go through all your trailer stuff. I configured the trailer. Gauges, just keep it right here. And as I said, the heads up display and that's set I think I've got it on full dim so it's really bright um, you can adjust it and move it around based on your seating position up down left right
this truck has a, if you look on the door sticker, uh, the payload is 4,100 pounds. The pin weight on this truck is, um, with the side-by-side -side in the back, it takes a little weight off the pin. I need to have the truck weighed, but I, I think the pin weight is about 3,000 pounds. With the uh, truck on the trailer, or the trailer on the truck, it sits about level. I looked underneath and I'm about, uh, it's got these really long bump stops that aren't, they're bump stops, but they have, uh, you can tell they're built to squish down. They're about three or four inches tall. And uh, I've got two to three inches from the bump stops. And uh, I've never felt like a hard hit where it's hitting on the bump stops. Maybe one day I will throw some airbags underneath it, but uh, it rides really nice empty. It's not bad at all. And loaded, it rides fine too, like I said. It sits pretty level, maybe a little bit of squat in the rear compared to the front. I'd have to measure it, but not very noticeable. Um, and one of the reasons why is because this is an ATC trailer, so it's all aluminum. And for how large it is, being you know 45 feet and 13 and a half feet tall, like I said, it's only about 14,000 pounds. And I think ATC actually advertises that it's only 13.5 or 13.6 empty but obviously that's with zero zero fluids um, and that'll depend kind of on your options I did add some solar some lithium batteries which they're really not that heavy so anyways I think this video is long enough but this is a 2023 f350 I've owned it for about two weeks, put some good miles on it, 2,000 miles already, and uh, it's, it's been an awesome truck so far, no complaints.